Hey everyone, it's Friday morning here in South Australia and um, it's time to finish off the mix before delivering um, this track to on a Saturday morning here our local time. Um, if, you, if you're in the US it'll most likely be delivered on uh, Friday afternoon. So uh, this week's track is Sledgehammer, uh, just a classic track, I've always loved this one and um, I've, uh, I've had it in the bag for a little while, just um, for a few weeks now. We recorded it with Stefan Houck uh, singing out front. Um, you might remember him singing uh, Don't Lose That Number, the Phil Collins track. Um, Sledgehammer was always a track we knew would suit his voice and um, it's getting all the right people in the, in the room at the same time. I really wanted uh, Sky to sing um, backing vocals on this as well with a husky um, voice I think would, would really suit the track. And uh, Cam Blockland playing uh, on his on on clean uh, sort of strat on that clean little um, muted sound as well all the way through. So obviously Stefan would be doing the guitar solo instead of uh, it being the uh, the recall of the uh, sh the the flute sound, the shakuhatsu sound. It would you know basically just go straight into the solo there because I mean we have Stefan Hauk. Why wouldn't we, right? Um, so there was a few. Um, there's a few hiccups on this track on, on how I would mix it. One thing is, uh, I mean, obviously we're only a few people in, in the basement studio here and, uh, we needed to pull off that sound, that signature, um, sledgehammer drums, which had a very bright reverb on the snare. At first listen I thought that it was actually a tambourine um, with a lot of reverb but um, I think with more listening I, I believe the original just has a very bright um, room reverb on the snare that just get just the right length and it's very very important to get your effects right. I mean the the reverbs on vocals can really ruin a track if you've got the wrong reverb on it. You know you can have fantastic musicians and playing a great song and you just put the wrong reverb on say the vocals and the whole thing especially on televisions and um, and tablets and phones reverbs have to be right for these things and you know um, I know that a lot of people are watching um, the sing it live videos that I produce and and uh, in the past uh, the Harley Street Country Club ones that I did watching those on, on um, mobile devices. So the reverb is one of those, if you get it wrong, it sounds so bad on them. And on a television, you know, these days, uh, television speakers are sort of a little small if you don't have a sound bar or something like that. So it's very crucial to get it right. And that's why I stick with a few of my own um, reverbs that just seem to work. And I don't want to really, there are plenty of reverb, reverb plugins out there. I don't want to go crazy buying lots of them beautiful stuff but if it's not broken why fix it right anyway let's get into the mix today I have done the mix so I'm not going to start from scratch I will turn off um, some plugs and and give you a bit of a, a listen um, through there I'll just pop the video off and let's dive in um, the the mix that you're going to hear today is through an ozone 10 plugin by uh, isotope this is my new mastering solution and I've been wanting to um, make a video um, to show you how this works. It is um, probably, you know, it's one of those things that I would put in my secret um, weapon stash. And I, you know, I do give away so many things in these videos. Um, you're not sort of here listening to it through my speakers and I hope that you're listening through some decent ones now. But this plug in here, um, I got it as a part of an isotope package that I'm subscribing to. So uh, what I get with that package uh, is all of these things. I get the insight, nectar, nectar's fantastic on vocals, neutrons, uh, ozone. Now ozone 10 is, is the actual full uh, plugin that you see right here. But as you can see, there's different elements like stabilizer, impact imager, dynamic EQ, maximizer. All of those things are also given to you as separate plugins, which is very cool as well. 
Um, so these things, um, some of these things I just don't know how they're working because, but they're doing a fantastic job. Stabilizer and things like that. I'll make another video about the intricacies of this plugin, but you're hearing it mastered through this. This is my mastering guy. I know a mastering guy, a real mastering guy is gonna do a better job for me, but it's gonna cost me too much money. I've got too many videos to spring out. Maybe one day when, um, when I get rich, I'll start doing that. I'm so sorry to all of the mastering guys out there. You do such a fantastic job and I wish, um, and I hope that I'll be working with you guys soon. But for now, uh, I was using Lander, um, L-A-N-D-R.com. Um, I've, I'm not doing that anymore um, because I really love the sound of this. It was such a surprise when I put it on uh, and I just hit the, the little circle button up here, press learn, you know, it, it just, it, you put the, the a few seconds of the uh, loudest part of your song on and it just listens to two or five, ten seconds and it sets itself up. And I've hardly ever tweaked it. This one here is, um, you know, it's it's almost how it came out on its thing. In the maximizer section, so it starts with an EQ. I mean, look what it's done here to my to my EQ. If I just turn this this plugin off, um, and I'll just play you some of my mix here, so you can hear um, what it, how it started off. Now, notice my level is way down here on the master, you know, about minus 12. I'm making sure that I'm, you know, I still have dynamic range, but I'm not really slamming that up to the zero. So when this gets the, um, when this gets my mix, of course it's going to add the extra thing. And I'm on 64-bit float, so I can, in logic, let my individual channels, individual tracks go crazy over zero. You'll see in this mix, you'll notice things that are bouncing plus 12 dB in the red. And I'm not, and I'm just cruising past like nothing's happening. The 64 bit float allows me to have that sort of headroom. I mean, I'm not going to do that on the master because that's, you know, there's, in the end, you just can't do that. You can do it on buses. So if you've got all the drums all together, bussing to one fader, you can slam that one really, really hard as well. I mean, it's, there is a limit, but. I've definitely crossed zero many, many times. In fact, I've, it's got to the stage now where I don't even worry about hitting zero. Uh, I used to put an L2. Um, if you've seen uh, one of my uh, previous mix videos and you see how I've got an L2 at the end of my plug-in chain as a babysitter, as I used to call it, to make sure that my channel didn't go past zero, it doesn't happen anymore because I just mix everything, how it goes, and go, wow, I wish I could have turned it all down to, I mean, if something like the snare drum is just way too uh, soft, and I need it to be louder, and it's already hitting zero, and everything's already in the red, I just turn it up more. It doesn't distort, as long as my master is pulled way back here, and I do that uh, using my VMR plugin, so in, in the trimmer, the first part here of my VMR is pull all the way back to, you know, like minus 10. So I've already saved myself minus 10 dB on the master anyway. So here's the ozone. I'm gonna plug it back in. I'm going to set, click on the gain match button. So you're gonna hear the same gain of the master and of my incoming audio. Let's have a listen to the difference between the mastered and the unmastered, right? So this is why I got this thing. And this is, I swear by it now. Uh, and I mix it while it's on now. Once I might get my mix to a certain extent, it's pretty close, and the rest is, you know, details that not many people are gonna know about, little tiny things. I put this on, set it up for the, um, for the, the loudest part of the song, listen to it, tweak it a little bit, and then I get back into the mix, and I just forget about it, like my mastering guy is just there mastering at all times. So now I'm mixing to a master, right? So, and this is something I just wasn't doing before. So um, it's it's a whole new ball game. All right, let's just listen to um, some of the track. I'll find a bit where we've got a bit of vocals. If you just laid down your tracks, you could have so that's mastered. Let's I'll press the bypass button here and let's um, 
let's go backwards and forwards between. Now remember these are a level match, so it's not coming out real loud, um, but you can hear the tonal differences between these two things. This is without mastering. Alright, let's turn it on. Off. And back on. Now the main difference I can hear, uh, obviously, is body. And it's also controlling the, the, the way the top end can uh, sometimes be uh, a bit barky or too sizzly. Uh, it's in the dynamic EQ module, so it goes EQ, stabilizer, impact, imager, and you know there's a lot of phase problems in um, in a lot of mixes when using microphones and da 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 da, um, especially since snare drum is in all our mics. Dynamic EQ, so it's just a dynamic, um, you know, a multiband compressor. Now it has already applied something over here, this one here. It's almost at 4K, it's not really too sizzly, but let's, I mean, I can just uh, solo that and have a listen to what it's doing. That's just what that tiny little thing is. It's just recognize something that is a little bit too full on and it's suppressing it just enough. And of course, you know, um, it has all of its different speeds, uh, thresholds, everything here as well, just like its own little compressor. And I can widen it, change its frequency, whatever I want. And I can add, um, add a bunch of those on top of what it's done. So this thing is intricate, it's, it's advanced, it has already controlled the bottom and the top, the, the gain in the maximizer, the final bit, you can see it's uh, so minus nine um, dB uh, push. I've just got it on a minus one ceiling because I'm delivering to YouTube and minus one dB is the limit. You don't give it any more than that, otherwise uh, you're not in the game. So, and even then, if you hit this too hard and you and it's too loud in luffs, it's going to, you know, I mean, I've got the, the threshold set to minus 11. So if you get um, this too loud, then YouTube will squash it in the algorithm. And remember, most people aren't listening in 4K, they're listening on their mobile device or something like that. So it's already dumbed down your 4K 24-bit audio version, and it's dumbing it down to an audio device. You've got to make sure that it's not compressing it too bad because, you know, you just went in too hot. So minus uh, 1 dB, let's have a listen to the squash on it. I'll switch off the gain match now. Up and down, around the bend. So you can hear that down the bottom here is too much, but it's good, it's crunchy, it's loud. Um, in some tracks, that's really where you want to be hitting, hitting it hard. I remember, I've got a lot, you know, minus 10 dBs worth of stuff over here So um, before it hits. So that's a fair bit. Um, so anything over about nine anyway is, is more than what I was giving it in dynamic range. So it's squashing the track. Um, I think that keeping it around the 10 mark gives me enough loudness without making the track really too hard and too, um, you know, too loud for the YouTube uh, algorithm, you know, which is going to get, uh, I, I treat the, um, the YouTube algorithm like my grandfather just doesn't like loud stuff, you know, it's turn it down, whoa, it's too loud. You've got to treat it like uh, an old person is going to be standing, uh, you know, would never sit next to the speakers in your in your performance. Be light on it because you'll always be better off giving it less than giving it too much. You really ruin all of your, I mean, when you make a video go live and you've given it too much, ah, that's on you. Minus one dB on your ceiling and not too loud, all right? Going up and down around the bend. You Anyway, look. 
Let's get off that Ozone 10 on the master. Absolutely fantastic. I've got a little EQ that I put in there just to get rid of a little frequency that I found that in the middle when I heard the, it back, it had a little bit of this. Bit of that. And I suppressed that that um, the frequency, so it's 580. It was just uh, when I bounced it around all my speakers, it just seemed. I think it was on the control ones. It just seemed to really poke through that particular frequency. And I thought, look, um, and when I when I suppressed it, it really did make a great dif difference to uh, everything. You know, just a little bit, just opened up that that center. I like. Um, I don't like a barking mix anyway. I like that sort of old school hi-fi. My mum had um, a fantastic. Um, hi-fi system in the 80s she used to play all the stuff on it and it had great big speakers and separate amps and turntables and stuff i think it was uh i think it was a sanyo or a sharp i can't I, um i'm not sure mum you have to let me know fantastic unit and she used to like a lot of wattage and she had some great speakers and you know like bass was you know, king in our house, just, you know, when she put on some George Benson or something or Earth, Wind & Fire, you could really feel it uh, and you could really hear it next door. So um, I've always been brought up with that smiley face EQ sort of thing. So I don't like that sort of mid-range. Ah, oh. I'm always trying to get rid of that um, in my mix. Let's get to the drums. Uh, I suppose let's just uh, have a look under the hood. I'll solo them off, have a look at my mixer and let's... Firstly, just turn off everything. While I've got a select, I can just do this, switch off everything. So this is uh, just running levels and with no plugins. But, but it is going through that master, remember? So um, some of these things are bust. Let's have a listen to it fairly raw. You can hear on probably the rack time, I think that is. A little bit of a low ring as well on the floor I can actually put those two plugins on and it gets rid of it so these these VMRs are set up with gates this pink one here noise gates too um, so if I find a place where the uh... here we go Where it jumps in, so here's one over here. With the yeah. So you can hear the bleed through the overheads. Um, I'm not ki I'm not triggering the kick in this one. Let's just um, I'll turn on my turn on my plugins. Notice I've got a gain plugin right here. Um, I'm this is a a, a trigger that I'm running on the snare. Because this, the uh, the 57 mic that I've got on top of the snare is just a very short sound. I've decided that I need the ambience, the rest of the mics that I would like, you know, under and, and rest of mic, but you know, you can't put too many ambient mics in here for drums are gonna pick up other things. Um, so, I've put a trigger, I've, I've triggered the snare on another track and I've inserted a plug-in and put its ambient mics on. So I've just tuned it to the same pitch. So they go together. So if you, that's by itself. And that's with the ambience out the side so it just sounds much much uh, more sort of live and in there and it gives that bright little tail as well that I was that I was trying to achieve um, with the original sledgehammer drum sound um, all together so I've also triggered in a tambourine sample into the trigger too I've Put a little sample delay and made it late by you know just a few samples just you know a couple of thousand samples so in milliseconds what that's 37 milliseconds so it's the, the it doesn't come exactly on the snare it's just a little later so um you want to be on the 
group bit you know the the better part of the line the the late you want to be late with your tambourines never ever early you want to hit never hit the tambourine before you hit the snare ouch uh that's a rule breaker so a deal breaker so adding that to the drums overheads of course i have treated these guys getting through um a few little hums that I'm hearing on stuff because um, because you know if I turn off all these plugins on this on the overheads they're hearing the honest um, floor tom and rack tom um, wooms as well right because they're, they're pretty close and a lot of kick don't want a lot of kick in there I slam it with the monster um, plugin in my VMR, and I'm, I'm using the FG de -er as well. It's a great little de -er. I really like it on drums. Um, it's good on a rock vocal, um, not so good on girl vocals. I, 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 maybe it's the microphones I'm using, um, but um, a very, very cool little setup. That's very basic, that one. Um, then I'm just cutting out little things that I find that are annoying in, in speakers. <clears throat> and then boosting the gain. So I'm adding 4 dB of gain on the end. Now, I always do that right on the end because you just some plugins just don't like being hit really hard. If I was to put that 4 dB up up the top, it would sound totally different and some of the, the EQ might might not like that. The EQ might start um, reacting negatively if I put too much gain into it. So I always put the gain last treat it how I want and then put a gain plug in and turn it up to where I want and I've got you know got the fader on unity um, hi-hats to 57 now I used to use a condenser but uh, Stefan Hauk a fantastic player and producer uh, if you've um, if you haven't seen Stefan's um, channel go and see it he's a fantastic uh, multi-instrumentalist and songwriter and producer you know what a massive star that guy is uh, this is the, the lead singer of this song I'm talking about. So Stefan um, uses a 57, which is your just general drum mic. So instead of a you know a condenser, which sometimes can just be a little too sensitive, picks up too many things, and it's too harsh on the top end. So 57 is limited to its top end. And since swapping it out, um, the hats now I think are sounding nice and controlled. And I've really just knocked off all of the bottom end. You know what I mean? I've got this going maximum here. That's It's just a little mic, you know, next to the hi-hats. But I need that, um, I need just that little bit of detail on the right-hand side. So I always mix this to how you're seeing it on the video. So how you're seeing it on the video is you can see uh, Mario's um, hi-hat is on the right of the screen so that's where you'll hear it um, that's really just on there to, to help I wasn't a big um, hi-hat mica uh, in the past but I'm really into it now and I think that that really uh, makes the drums complete uh, all right let's go to the bass the bass we had uh, an octave of pedal so we decided to take a line from that And the bass we took uh, straight. I ended up uh, because the, the THU uh, comes with your slate uh, bundle. THU, I just uh, went into and found uh, an octave. I tried both them out and, and I like the uh, legacy one. I'll just turn that on. And I just bo bust both of those guys through to one bass. Uh, you know, uh, bust them into one uh, single channel, into a, into a bus, and I just add a little bit of R bass on it. Um, just a little touch, it's just, just on. Just add a little bit, bit of body. It already was big, it was two basses together. One was um, the octave through a pedal, and the other one was a virtual um, with a sort of a deeper bottom end. So, you know, together, I'll just um, put them in with the drums.
Now, it sounds quite toppy and sort of mid-range, but you really need it to cut through, especially, uh, I mean, if you're hearing this on a mobile, you're watching this, this video on a mobile, you, I'm sure you can hear that bass through your mobile phone because the mid-range is, is left in and it is intentional. Uh, bass needs mids. Don't cut the mids out of your bass. Uh, maybe if you're doing hip-hop or something like that, but you know, you're going to lose those guys who don't have subwoofers, bro. Um, so uh, let's move on to a cam on the electric guitar. That was Damien Steele Scott playing the bass, by the way. Not an easy song to play. Nailed it. Um, fantastic. Um, uh, Damien writes his uh, writes charts and he leaves them all around my studio. I've got a chart for that somewhere in a drawer where he uh, pumped out the bass to that. Um, I might throw it on my um, Patreon or something for, for you guys to check it out. So, um, Cam's guitar went direct in straight from his um, from his uh, Strat, I think it is, and that one went straight into the interface. My Persona Studio Live 32R straight in. And clean, 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 so um, there is no amp sim or anything on that. I'll just take all this stuff off it. So that's all it was. Fantastic player, he's right on the money. It's all the way through, it's unedited. What a fantastic guitar player. And that's really the meat of the groove. So um, without that, the song just does not groove um, as well. It's that extra little thing that, that crosses over the hats and the bass groove. So, you know, hearing that together. So it's very important for us to have our in-ear monitors listening on the way in um, from the interface, not hearing it from Logic. Because if it has to hit Logic and come back to our ears, there's too much latency. And you know, if some people are listening directly in some latency, you would never get a groove. It would just be totally out. So everyone hears um, direct um, using the Personas um, inputs. It's um, its own software, the Universal Control. Um, it comes in and um, I'll just open her up here. <clears throat> and it's over here on my other screen. Let me just pop it over and show you what it is. So here's the, the software that uh, operates my interface. And over here I have IEM mixes. I've got a main mix left and right because it's like a PA, right? Without any faders. Um, the main mix, that's I, I feed that one to... Um, to Mario on the drums or whoever's playing drums. And that's a nice, beautiful stereo mix of a whole bunch of things, right? Starting with drums down here through all of the different vocals and things. Then I have uh, six stereo IEM mixes here. So IEM, that's mainly the lead singer. And um, I'll just go through and, you know, the keyboards, two, two stereo pairs for keys. There's guitar guys here. Uh, there's the basses always there, you know, me and my, my vocals, my keys. Whoever is there on the day, um, I'll just name it and give them an IEM pack and that's their mix. So they can always just press it on the touch screen here, uh, screw around with their mix and um, including reverb and everything, it's in stereo and, you know, so they can be comfortable. Um, that's a really cool, cool feature. If you're recording and you use ears, you definitely need, you know, something that can... Uh, give you direct monitoring. It has 16 outputs on that, um, the Studio Live 32R, so I can run up to eight stereo uh, sets of ears, or 16 mono. Um, all right, Stefan was uh, playing the solo, so um, I've just, um, I'll go down here and give you a little bit of a, uh, a look at what I've done to treat this. I really, didn't need to do much from the original. I'll just take it everything off here and, and we'll let's hear it raw. I 
Um, I'm seeing a bit of latency with the video only because um, I have to use a, a certain audio um, output device here so that I can capture this video and you can see and hear it. So, but um, he, that's raw from his pedal. So his pedal uh, board, he normally uses an amp. It's pretty rare for him to um, just do that, but, and the PRS, it sounds pretty huge. I mean, this, this kid knows how to pull a great tone from his guitar. If anything, to me, I can hear that it's very flat and it probably just needs a little bit of life. So, and it's got a good slap delay. Um, so I've actually added some reverb, a little bit of slap of my own, and a delay delay, a longer delay. Let's just hear them by itself. So this is just effects. In the VMR, I've really just gone to clean guitars, which is my favorite guitar for anything dirty uh, or clean. Clean guitars in the first classic strip here is just wow. These guys really know how to make great presets. I know how to use these modules and I put, muck around with them, but these guys have got presets for just about everything. It just makes my, my job so much easier. <laughs> So I've suppressed that, uh, uh, uh. and I've added just a little bit of body in the low mids. And inside the VMR also, I've pulled it back to, you know, below 6K, is, so nothing be, uh, above 5.3 kilohertz here is getting through at all, nothing. No digital top end stuff. Um, so that, you know, really just gives me a nice, clean, warm guitar sound. Um, let's hear it with everyone in. And he was just running through the monitors um, enough for Damien, who didn't use ears on this one. Um, so he could hear where the solo was <clears throat> and well, along with some keys and, uh, and Cameron's guitar. Um, and that's, and you know, in his in-ears, Stefan's in-ears, he could hear his solo and we, everyone who's got in-ears can hear it beautifully. So, um, let's get on to the vocals. It's great having a lineup like this on vocals. Um, with, uh, Sky and Cam singing with me, it's crazy. So, um, having that... Kick the habit, kick the habit. Share my skin. We've given Cam the the high note. Um, Cam's got such a high voice as most of them. So, Share my skin. and Sky's on the. Um, Share my skin. And I'm on the the. Share my skin. Share my skin. There's lots of bleed in there. I do have them all bust to one fader here and I've got volume going up and down. But um, just to keep that bleed, um, you know, out. But it has got compression and everything on it. So you, you can't really hear the ups and downs in, in volumes too much. This is the new stuff. A little bit. We'll go dancing. Even this group here, <clears throat> on the record, it was quite, <clears throat> quite thin, I thought. And um, so I wanted to bring out more body in the backing vocals because it was more my style. And uh, of course, having, um, having uh, Sky and Cam singing with me there as well. So uh, I did I, add my own reverb to it, just a little general plate. Um, that one's just the default that comes out on Verb Suite. Verb Suite is part of the um, the Liquid Sonics um, comes with my Slate plugins bundle as well. I love that reverb. That one is one of those ones that just works, and I don't want to change it because it works for me. Works on on everyone's device. So um, <clears throat> Stefan has his own reverb that, or we all share a single reverb, which is one of those Verb Suites. Um, we all share it, 
Now its width is set in the middle and I believe I probably would have widened the BV width. I've actually brought it in a little. It may have been because um, I found it was just too phasey. But um, you know, you, you have separate reverbs on some things and everyone shares the same. There should be at least be one reverb that everyone shares just to bring them all into the room. So there's a bit on that, the snares feeding into it. Um, hats maybe, a little bit of the overheads or something like that's feeding into that one. And, um, and the vocals you know, feed a little bit into that reverb. So everything seems to be in the same space. Um, I don't like it sounding like it's um, overdubbed because you've put too many you know, um, different reverbs on. Uh, Stefan's vocals, um, well, maybe we'll get to that last. The keys are in uh, pretty basic. I've just got two keyboards and four outputs on my Roland, so I've got... Um, so the top keyboard and the bottom is doing a little bit of organs and stuff like that and the opening um, sound. So. These, um, I did have these mixed right up and I'm thinking, you know, I'm, I probably should just suppress them a little bit. It's just because I'm a keyboard player and I'm also the mixing guy doesn't mean that the keys should be too loud. And I'm sorry uh, if that is sometimes. Um, but hey, uh, so in this instance, it's easy to overdo them. So I'm just trying to keep them um, just on a leash, the volume wise. But make sure they've got a lot of character. There's a lot of layers in that brass um, patch and some um, keeping the organs and everything as well in um, in nice layers. Sometimes when I played, um, because I've set up my sound, sometimes uh, there is some um, strings or reverb from one sound dripping to the other output, but hey, at least I've got two, um, two different stereo files there um, coming out of the keyboard, so it's, it's pretty easy to mix. Um, getting on to Stefan's vocal, you can see this is in automation mode. I've gone in and uh, put, I haven't really dipped it all the way down, but I've dipped it fairly low, you know, four or five dB below zero um, every time the drums are, sna are, are smacking in. So. And I'm using a, um, another plugin that comes in the isotope thing called Diplosive. The RX-10 range of these, this stuff is really crazy good. And the Deplosive stops those really big bangs. Let me switch this off and you can have a listen to this, his vocals without it. It's, it's the proximity effect when you're right up and close to a mic and you're really belting into it and there's a lot of puzz and it just bangs the, the capsule and it's not, I mean, it rocks, it's better, you know, on an album sounding track like I like to mix, um, it's a thing with dynamic mics. This deplosive sort of fixes it. Let's hear it if, without it. If you just lay down your tracks. So you can hear on the down. If you just lay down your tracks. Now you can just take some bottom end off it, but that's going to kill the whole body of the sound. A deplosive will just hit when it's needed. Um, if you just lay down your tracks. It's like it's not even there, right? It's like the same body, but that down, the great big thing, is fixed just with this one plug-in. Now, I didn't change the sensitivity or strength. I just put it on its default, and it's, it's really fixing it. If you just lay down your tracks Compared to If you just lay down your tracks So that's, a, that's another little secret one in the bag. Um, isotope. RX-10 Deplosive. They got a great de in that too. I mean, you know, Isotope, fantastic um, plug-in bundle. Um, I think that Waves have definitely got some great competitors here with Slate and Isotope. I'm thinking that it's only a matter of time before Waves um, is off my shopping list. I don't want to have too many things in, in, in here anyway. Um, I don't want to spend, I don't have that much time to be playing with too many toys, but I really love the sound of these things. So, um, okay. I've got <clears throat> a VMR on it. It's Vox one, which is a standard. It's got a little star there, so I have tweaked it. I think I've added this air plug-in um, to add some air because Stefan's voice 
um, wasn't the same as Peter Gabriel's. Peter Gabriel had a very airy voice, and um, plus Stefan's giving a little bit more oomph, and uh, Peter was singing, you know, a little bit less, you know, more breathy. So it seems that, you know, the whole approach needed some air in, in the vocals, so that's what I've done. Um, and this air plugin really adds all the stuff that you want. Um, I'm using a bomber plugin that I would n normally use on solos and things like that, just to push his voice out enough, um, just to give it a tone change. I normally don't use tight, I use present or fat, but that really seems to suit. Um, I haven't done much EQing in there, not much at all. A little bit of mid push, and really that's it, right? Um, the And I've gained it 4.2 on top, so let's have, uh, um, I mean, let's go to what the camera heard. Let's, you know, um, I've got this track up here. Going up oh, without, without Stefan's in. You know, you compared that to what, um, job and um, I've got that little flangey reverb uh, in, a delay in there as well so I really needed to add a little bit of flanger in there somewhere um, and it's just on the the reverb or the delay uh, plug-in on the main vocal so you a little washy sound um, it's a classic psychedelic um, moment there. <laughs> so I've, I've actually gone to a stereo delay. Um, what have I done in the EQ here? Made it really bright. Uh, put its own little reverb on there just so it's um, not very, it's not delays that go tick, 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 tick. So they're just sort of washy and a flanger on the end. Um, when you put a flanger after reverb, it always sounds really cool anyway. So the vocals aren't really treated EQ wise or anything. Um, and it was just finding a way to get them to sit in the mix. The best, um, the best way for me to do that is generally to turn it right down, flip it to mono, and get it on my smallest speakers um, that I trust. And uh, that's probably my uh, little uh, Grover Notting CR1s. Um, and just listening to them, getting the mix and the balance of everything perfect. <clears throat> so you can hear everything, including the reverbs, on the vocal reverbs, because a lot of times when you flip to mono, all the verbs and that seem to just dry up and it just seems to be really flat and lifeless. So I make sure I can still hear those reverbs um, in there and just, because I'm, you know, I'm in mastering mode right now. I've got the Ozone 10 on. So I don't need to, um, you know, I'm hearing what the, the master is going to be like. So now when I go inside the mix and start tweaking things, it gets, it goes through the wash into the mastering pot and is treated with all of that 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 full chain of plugins. Now, I used to go back to the Ozone when I've finished my mix and, and re-learn uh, and let it come up with a brand new um, thing, but I think that that's totally the wrong approach. I think once it's working great and you're mixing and you're getting used to it, um, as long as you're referencing the original mix as, as well, um, if you're doing, you know, trying to, to um, draw parallels between the mix. I think this song has to start like Sledgehammer. The drums have to come in and people have to go, wow, this sounds like Sledgehammer. And from then on, you just uh, nail it through to the end. I've got a great lineup of people um, playing on this track anyway. So this was a little bit more of a, a dive in uh, rather than starting from the beginning. Uh, but, and, and I hope that you learned stuff from this as well. I mean, I don't want to bring any uh, videos out that aren't useful. So I want to make sure that this is, if there's extra stuff that you want um, to see or hear, please put it in the comments. I'm sorry that you've had to wait so long for a mixed video. Um, and I do hope that you in, enjoy this track on Sing It Live. If you haven't subscribed to Sing It Live, 
please do um, and support us all. Um, I've got a great crew over there since um, since I left the HSCC. Um, a whole bunch of, of them are, um, have come over to my channel and that's fantastic. Um, so um, we are making good tracks all, all the time and uh, it's important that we're doing stuff that you like. So please, uh, I do read all the comments and I do uh, take note of requests. So I, I do listen um, while I still have the time anyway. Um, I, I do whatever I can to, to be listening to what you want. So, and as far as Producer Nerds channel goes, this one here, if you've learned anything from this, it'd be great. Just uh, please subscribe and or share this around as, as well. Um, I, I don't like to edit these videos too much. You probably won't find um, m many edits in this, if any. I do rave on a bit. I do have an intent to, um, to show you a few of my tricks. These things are important to me, uh, especially things like Ozone and, and Slate Digital stuff. I don't get any kickbacks from these guys. I pay a full tote for all, everything that I get. Um, I don't use uh, cracked plugins or anything like that. Um, I've, I, I just want to show you what I'm doing here because I believe that these things need to be shared. Um, I love you guys' support and thanks so much for keeping me going and, uh, and for all my patrons on Patreon. Thank you so much for um, keeping me alive. Uh, I'll say goodbye now. Hopefully you uh, learned something from this. I've got all the links down the bottom as well. You know where to find them. There's the title and the little more button. Click on that. Now I've got the, uh, the original video or you know the, the final video and everyone else's channel too. Go and check out their channels because um, these guys are really so fantastic in their own right and they have their own brands. Please follow them because um, I'm sure that you're really going to dig their stuff as well. So thanks for listening. My name's Darren. It's goodbye now. See ya.